working together how we can improve ourselves and improve our lives. But today we are standing in solidarity for those who are occupied throughout the world and in Palestine. And what we say to the world government, not in our name, not in our name, not in our name. Well, as, as usual, we end with obviously speeches, but so without further ado, let's pass it over to Salim, who's organised the march today. Give it up for Salim! Assalamu alaikum to everyone, peace be upon you that's come here today. Thank you all for coming out today, and a special thank you because obviously I know the weather's been cold, people have been ill, and obviously you must be getting sick and tired for coming out every single week. So, so that, thank you for everyone coming out today and I just want to start today by thank you for sacrificing your time to coming out and standing up for the injustice because for many of us here <coughs> For many of us here, we have no direct link to the Palestinians who are facing these atrocities. So, you must be wondering, and I am wondering, why are you guys here when you have no direct link to them? It's because we are human. And we demand a ceasefire. You lot are proper lively today, innit? I want to ask one question. Why are we here marching through our cities demanding for a ceasefire? Why are we demanding the time to stop for the genocide? It is because it was said by the Prophet Muhammad so long that he was selling. We are like one body of a person. If the eye is sore, the whole body aches. And if the head aches, the whole body aches. It is because it does not require a scientist to realize that killing innocent men is wrong. It doesn't require a neurosurgeon to realize that killing innocent women is wrong. It doesn't require a PhD to realize that killing innocent children who just want to play is wrong. Yeah, such educated, knowledgeable and intellectual, core by core, civilized leaders who have studied at the best of universities. Who have studied at the best of universities do not realize that their actions are fully How many more Palestinian children must die before Rishi Suna and world leaders? How many more Palestinians must die before we see Suna and world leaders realize that they are dying in the dream? Yeah. No matter what is happening now, we have more than 3,000 dead Palestinian children, not enough for them to call their parents to be fired. So we are here today, today to send one message loud and clear to our political leaders. The children in Gaza today could have been saved. The children in Gaza yesterday could have also been saved. The children in Gaza should have been saved. We should be able to do so by calling for a season, by not calling for a season. So shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! We need to send a clear message. There is no thing humanitarian about calling to a humanitarian pause. There is no thing humanitarian about bombing a refugee camp, stopping the bombing for a couple of hours, and then bombing them a few hours later. There is no thing humanitarian about 
Now he's just in humanitarian for letting a starving child eat a little and then bombing them with white phosphorus. And this genocide cannot continue for a day longer. So let's say it together. Cease fire now! 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 They are so desperate to erase our Palestinian existence. To silence our screams and our voices by hiding media coverage. You have been shadow of the truth. You have made us louder and louder. So the louder we are, free, 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 free. They think they can hide us from the truth. They think they can hide us from the justice. And they think they can hide us from it all. So what do we say? Truth and justice will prevail. Truth and justice will prevail. We will never forget when world leaders were silent, when we were loud in our demands. These days will be going down in history as the days where the world was silent when the genocide was taking place. So we have one message, and we want that message to be heard all over our leaves, all over our Bradford, all over our London, and all around the world. And we want that message to be clear. Free, 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 from the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Thank you everyone for coming out for your time today. Thank you for listening to me. For a long time for some Free, free. Free, free. Free, free. I can probably introduce our next person. First of all, it's Kay here. Kay, are you here? Okay, if you can come to the front if you're here. Thank you. Right, what we, what we want to do is something new. I want everyone to hold up your banners, pull out your phones, and make a video. Come on, everyone. Pull out your phones, put banners up high. Come on. Woo, come on. Free, free. Free, free. Free, free. One, two, three. Four. Occupation no more. Five, six, seven, eight. Israel is a terrorist state. One, two, three, four. Occupation no more. Five, six, seven, eight. Israel is a terrorist state. Palestine, well, like, can be a low key. When I say long live Palestine, you say long live Gaza. Long live Palestine. 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 Long live Gaza. Right, okay, next one we've got Mohammed, who's going to read our little poem. It's fantastic to see the kids getting involved. Come on, Mohammed. Come on, give me a couple of words. Right, Let the world hear their newest cries. See the pain reflected in tearful eyes. 
tiny hands that once reached for the sun, now bear the weight of a battle not won. Innocent hearts let petals unfold in the harsh winds of a story untold. In the name of peace, let compassion reign and wash away the scars of endless pain. For innocent souls, let prayers ascend as we yearn for a day where sorrows met. In the crucible of conflict, let love ignite and lead us towards a dawn so bright.
because it's anti-Semitic. Well, I'm telling you now, as a Jewish person, I stand for one democratic, secular state of Palestine. so-called opposition when they're talking about a two-state solution. The two-state solution is dead in the water and it always was because Israel will not agree with a two-state solution. The choice is one state of Israel or one democratic state of Palestine. Coca-Cola has also been impacted. Compared to last year, the uh, value is down by 12 billion pounds. Thank you. <laughs> Boycotting does work. Everyone thinks, oh, if I don't do it, somebody else will do it. No, we need to educate ourselves on boycotting properly with products, specifically targeted boycotting. No, but what we find is people are just randomly boycotting random organizations. You'll say, let's boycott Tesco, let's boycott Sainsbury's. But the key thing is you need to boycott the products themselves. Now, and, and Barclays Bank as well. Oh, no, and obviously, if you've got accounts with Barclays, move away. These companies will then stop supporting the, uh, the genocide in Israel. Now, targeting boycotting, it does work. Now, what you need to do is when you go in the supermarket, look at the labeling of where the product has come from. Now, the, the, these companies, large conglomerates, conglomerates, are getting clever. They're not putting their packaging, but you to say, from Israel, you know, or, or uh, from, from the Middle East. Now, it will say, dates are packed from the UK. Can anybody tell me where the dates from the UK? Nowhere. There's no matter the dates from the UK. They get packaged. They get sent over, they might get sent over to Spain, and we pack it and send it to the UK. And I say, dates are grown in Spain, dates are grown in Sweden. I can't, I can't I never remember dates being grown in Sweden. So it's really, really important that when you buy the products, look at where they've come from, and then understand with that product, with that product, we get from that country. Definitely not. And then what you start doing is targeting different products. When you're going to takeaways, you see Coca Cola, you buy. Rather than attacking the takeaway themselves, they buy 
just ask for a different model. Don't stop stocking it. Because if they're not selling it, they're going to stop stocking it. And that's how change comes. That's what South Africa did. And today, or yesterday, we've seen what South Africa have done. First of all, let's give a big plaudit to South Africa. South Africa, the only country to go to the ICJ and present their case on behalf of the Palestinian people. And there's a list of other countries that are supporting the, I the ICJ case with South Africa. But we can see those, co those countries, mainly the Western countries, UK, US, complete. Silence, complete silence. The silence is so definitely it's unbelievable. The hypocrisy that we've seen. You know, we saw the foreign secretary of the select committee. He couldn't even say that this was genocide. You know what was going on. He couldn't even say that. Even the foreign secretary sat next the the his team member sat next to him. He couldn't even say it at all whatsoever. They couldn't even utter the words. Disgraceful. These people are supposed to represent us. So we need to remember that next time when they come knocking on our doors, we need to say, What have you done for me? What have you done for Palestine? Right, so the next speaker that we need to get on is Shane. Let's give it up for Shane, everyone. Shane Cahill and once again I have the honour to speak with you all on behalf of IRAGI, uh, an Irish Republican political party. And we would once again like to reaffirm our solidarity with the Palestinian people and the Palestinian cause. Well done as always to everyone here for coming out and telling Leeds and telling Britain and telling the world that you will not stand for what is happening in Palestine and that you will not rest until Palestine is finally free. Well done. What you are doing is powerful. Today, let's make sure that we make ourselves heard by our comrades down on the streets of London and that they shall be heard right across the world. Last time I spoke with you all, I spoke about how we all have power and that we can all make a difference. Whether it's coming out here week after week, month after month, or whether it's continuing our boycott campaign, or speaking about Palestine to friends, family, and on social media, we have power. Also, the last time I spoke with you, I spoke about a story involving South Africa and Ireland. Beginning in 1987, the shop workers' strike, which helped shift the shift Irish opinion and government policy on the apartheid regime of that time. Today, we get to speak about South Africa again. How beautiful is it that it is South Africa bringing this far-right extremist Israeli regime? to stand before the International Court of Justice, to make them answer for their crimes and their genocide of the Palestinian people. How beautiful and fitting that it would be South Africa. It is a symbol of the true meaning of never again. And this story involves Ireland again. It gives me such pride to see an Irish lawyer, me and Andy Brawling, representing South Africa. of how Melina found herself helping to bring Israel to justice began with reading a pamphlet. And this pamphlet told the story of a young Irish girl named Angela O'Hare. On August 14, 1976, Magella was 12 years old. She and her friends were walking near their village in County Armagh, a part of Ireland still under occupation, 
and which in 1976 was held at the point of a gun. The group passed a British Army post, and when they were 20 or 30 yards beyond the British soldier opened fire with a machine gun on this group of children, hitting Magella twice in the back. Her father heard the gunshots and ran to her. She died in his arms. That heroic soldier who opened fire on a group of children is named Michael Williams, a former member of the Paratrooper Regiment of the British Army. The same regiment who shot 14 innocent unarmed protesters dead on the streets of Derry, and 11 civilians in South Africa dead by Shame. Incidentally, this murdering coward was the sort of person that Rishi Sunak and his Tory government believes should be given an amnesty for prosecution under their disgrace and amnesty bill. It doesn't surprise me to find the same sort of people collaborating with the Israeli genocide today. Freya, as a young Irish woman, read this story of the cowardly murder of Magello O'Hare and felt anger. That deep anger that we feel when we read the news or see the pictures coming out of Palestine on social media today. She spoke to her mother about it. She asked her mother how such a thing could happen, and her mother replied, do something about it. And she has. Lena has done something about it. The evil that kills children on the streets of Ireland is the same evil that kills children on the streets of Palestine. And through her work, she is honoring the memory of Najala and all of the countless children that have been killed at the hands of the Israeli regime. Let us all hope that South Africa and Lena can show the world the true nature of this awful Israeli regime. And let the words of Lena's mother ring clear to us too. We feel angry. We cannot understand how all of this can be happening in the world in 2024. So let's do something. Let's share our voice on social media. Let's keep the pressure on politicians. Let's boycott Israeli goods and the goods and services of all of those who collaborate with them. Let's be back here again next week and let's tell the world that from the river to the sea. Thank you very much. And any of the young children that want to come and do some chants, if you want to come to the front, uh, we've got some chants for some chants. Everyone really is going to have children. I'm only 16, I can't be void. Free! 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 In our thousands, in our millions! In our thousands, in our millions! In our thousands, in our millions! Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry! Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry! Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry! Let him now shame on you! How many children killed by you? Let him now shame on you! Let him now shame on you! Let him now shame on you! Right, okay. Then our next speaker is, uh, is we're gonna get James. James is the uh, chair of P at least PSC, who's organized the march along with Sleep. Let's give it up for James! Thank you very much. I'm not gonna keep you long. Everyone's here, everyone knows. If we organize, we can win this. So join PSC, join Friends of Luxa. Join any other organisations which are supporting the Palestinians because we know that across Britain, men across the world, millions and millions of people are disgusted by this. They're shocked, they're horrified. If we organise, we will win it. We know that the professional politicians, Conservative, Labour, they don't support the Palestinians. But we also know that ordinary people do. They're seeing this on television. We know that 
This is a genocide. We know that because the International Court of Justice is listening to, hearing South Africa's genocide case. Genocide is the worst crime against humanity there can be. So, we've gathered here today, absolutely fantastic, week after week, I think this is week 13. There's also hundreds of thousands of people down in London demonstrating. And we're going to be here next week, we're going to be here the week after, we're going to be here the week after that. And we will win! Thank you very much. Let's give you a for James, everyone! Oh, come on. Right, we've got some little kids who are going to do some chants for us. Come on. We've got Mohammed here. Come on, give it for Mohammed.
go forward and shed a tear and say sorry for those kids who've been, you know, uh, uh, at least 9,000 babies, you know, under the rubble, let alone, you know, the ones who died. This morning, a starving girl was given a crust of bread to eat. She haven't even finished it, and she was absolutely incinerated, bombed. Free, free! Free, free! The ICG, I think, is doing a good job at the moment. We're getting, you know, all the, uh, you know, the proofs and the evidences, you know, one by one, and they're gonna go through it, and they gonna basically uh, uh, make uh, Israel guilty of its deeds, and they're gonna be judged heavily. <laughs> One more thing, Israel is going to be dismantled, that's for sure. And we are, we are all calling on one Palestinian state. One and only Palestinian state from the river to the sea. There's no more bargaining with these Zionists. They had one or twice, I think they had three times, three shots, and they missed it. You know, Camp David, the Oslo Agreement, and the Spanish Agreement, agreement, and they all turned their back on it and basically grabbed more land, living there they were grabbing more land, destroying houses. Israel is the biggest demolition uh, Zionist company, if you like, demolition, you know, Palestinian houses. So, Let's cheer up for all the victims of Palestine. Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Down, down Israel! Down, down Israel! Down, down Israel! Free, free! Free, free! From the river to the sea! From the river to the sea! Why is that the case? 
Why is it that this is the first time it's being done while it's happening? Because this is a genocide being live streamed to our phones. Many of us wake up and we see on our phones the death, the destruction, the devastation, and the amount of people who have lost their lives, lost their family members, and their homes. Nearly the entire population of Gaza is displaced. A population of 2.3 million people and nearly 2 million people of them no longer have their homes. And Israel is boldly claiming their plans to push them into the Sinai Peninsula, into the desert, so they can rid them of, of the land. And they want settlements. We've seen in the center of Gaza City where they put an Israeli flag. We've seen the videos of Israeli soldiers dancing and chanting that they want to wipe off the seat of Amalek. Amalek, a story in which the people of Amalek were invoked to be wiped out by every man, child, woman, cattle, ox, you name it. If they lived and breathed relation to Amalek, they were killed and murdered. And that scumbag Netanyahu invoked that by trying to pander to his Zionists and the Christian Zionists. Remember Amalek, what we did. Do what we did to Amalek. And then they try and say, oh, this isn't genocide. It is a genocide of language. Now, I don't know if any of you have watched South Africa case. I had the opportunity to watch it live. And South Africa, bless the lawyers of South Africa for the amount of amazing work that they've done. They made an airtight case. They gave every single bit of evidence imaginable. Photos, videos, statements, documents. And I loved all three hours. I didn't have to watch the next day of Israel. For three hours of their response. Their response for three hours. I'm not kidding, it was no more of us. That's mad. And no evidence brought up either. They couldn't give nothing. And they kept taking things out of context.